हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एडिशन ऑफ ट्रेवलिंग टाइटल्स माई नेम इज रोहिणी एंड आई वर्क हेयर एट तारा बुक्स ट्रेवलिंग टाइटल्स इज अ सीरीज वेर वी स्पीक अबाउट आर बुक्स दैट हैव बिन ट्रांसलेटेड इन टू अदर लैंग्वेजेस अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड एंड हैव ट्रेवल ट्रेवल्ड थ्रू मल्टीपल कॉन्टेक्ट थ्रू दिस वी ऑल्सो होप टू रिन्यू आर टाइज विद फ्रटर्नल पब्लिशर्स For the first iteration of this series, we've chosen Tara titles that have been published in Korean, with the active support from the Indo-Korean Cultural and Information Center. For each interactive session, uh, we are featuring a book that has been translated into Korean, and this session we are going to be talking about to market to market. So this very special book by uh anushka ravi shankar and emmanuel es kanziani is uh about a little girl who walks through a market so for this session we are joined by anushka ravi shankar who will speak about um the experience of writing to pictures we are joined by emmanuel es kanziani and he'll speak about the experience of live sketching at a market and then how that was transformed into uh, the final illustrations here we're also so happy to be joined by ratna ramanathan who is the designer of this book um and she'll speak a book about you know the importance of considering the book as an object while you're designing a book and also some interesting things like you know what happens when you think of the market as a book so um that that should be great the very special thing about this book of course is that it's been translated into korean and published by wong jin think big and it's been quite a success it's gone on for a print run of 29000 copies and um we will be hearing from a student of Uh, the inco center in this series we are supported by the indo korean cultural center in chennai and she is a student learning korean there and she has also gone to korea so she'll be speaking about you know what's common or what's also different in between indian and korean markets and we're going to start off this session with a reading of the book um and throughout the session if you have any questions or comments anything like that leave them in the comment section below at the end of the session we will um uh, answer you or read them out so i hope you enjoy this session and to start it off here's a reading of the book To market to market by Anushka Ravi Shankar and Emmanuel S Kanziani To market to market I'm going to the market with some money in my pocket my mother's giving me a lot of change to spend it anywhere for anything i care for something funny nice or even strange i don't know what to get a cheap and tiny pet a mouse a fish a pigeon or a cat a set of building blocks a shiny plastic clock a book a mug a bucket or a hat a face mask odd and weird a false mustache or beard a ball a pot a basket or a bun as i think and ponder i look around and wonder about the market having lots of fun jangle 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 lama bangle holding stand nosy 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 i'm a posy i smell grand faster 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 i'm a rooster i can fly 
creeping, creeping, creeping. I am peeping. I am spy. Tutti, tutti, tutti. I'm a fruity kind of dish. Thumping, thumping, thumping. I'm a jumping kind of fish. Silly, silly, silly. I'm a chilly sort of sneeze. Funny, funny, funny. I am many, many me's. I come back from the market with the money in my pocket. When my mother asks me, so what have you bought? I give her all the change and say, Ma, it's very strange. I wonder how it happened. I forgot. I hope you enjoyed the reading of the book. It's quite a delightful book, isn't it? So, it's actually common to find picture books where illustrations act as the visual form of the story behind the book. But what's so special about this book is it does more. It's a combination of two narratives and each of them tell a different story. So, for example, if you look at this page, you'll see at first glance that this is an illustration of a stall at the market. But if you look closely, what the illustrator has done here is that he has woven multiple activities into this scene. So for example, there is a black cat with bangles on its tail. Do you see that? There are fish jumping through bangles. There's a little mouse who's running away with a golden bangle in its mouth. In the background, we get a brief glimpse of the rest of the market and its shopkeepers. However, the text doesn't describe anything we can see in this illustration, right? All it's saying instead is that jangle, jangle, jangle. It's the sound of the bangles. And it's like this for every page with a different setting with different uh, different details hiding in every page. So for example, let's look at this page. It's a different setting and different activities are taking place. So do you see the butterflies here? If you... Now if you look at this page and you see the size of the text, you'll see it's a lot smaller. And why do you think so? This is the other special element of this book. It's how these different letters express the various moods in it too. Just changing the way letters sit on a page can tremendously change the experience of reading a book through its text and illustrations. Now let's have a look at this page. This specific picture book may not have a lot to like read in the literal sense, but it invites you to observe the images. So for example, what does this picture tell you about the market? Firstly, that it's close to the sea. You can see that the fishermen and the fisherwomen bring in their fish every day here. Or even if you look at the color in these illustrations, look at the colors of the saris that people are wearing, the flowers on their hair. Do you see similar colors, similar um outfits or ornaments in markets near you it makes you question your context and it's talking about this a little bit more and the experience of um, sketching in a live market like this this was actually in Pondicherry market we now go on to Manuel Escanziani the illustrator to hear about not only the experience of sketching it but maybe the reasons why these Fantastical elements are there. Yeah, now I remember uh, how the project started. I brought some sketches of uh, daily life uh, for the workshop in Chennai for Wittara. And then I've been asked to, to try to develop the life of a market because the markets in India are very full of light, shades, contrast, and hues, and different kind of color palettes. And then I took up uh, an aspect 
Yeah, more than a week, I remember well. All day, all day, it's uh, more than a week uh, spending in different areas of the market with the, with the daily life. I was right there in the, early in the morning. Already after two, three days, I was completely let's say, welcomed by them, uh, completely into the scene. The ladies giving me flowers, tea, sitting amongst them. And, and yeah, it was a. Uh, okay, the, the Indian markets are different from the Europeans. North Europeans, South Europeans, like a fish market in Italy, it's approximately the same. There is this golden light in the morning, and uh, this uh, aliveness. And then uh, usually I go there, I sit, I close the eyes uh, for a while to listen to all the sounds, the chattering, and uh, noise, uh, climbing. And then I start to sketch first uh, on, my, on my books sketching and uh, taking the posture of the people without thinking if the drawing is good or not but making the hand going freely following the flow and, and then because of my what I feel in the daily life that each object circumstance has its own life it's really alive that nothing is uh, inert or unconscious so I'm trying my drawings, sometimes I really feel and I see, for example, in the case of the, the fish flying in the air, even if they were dead, apparently, it was still the, the life, the kind of soul, the soul of their, uh, their form that was floating around and moving. So everything becomes alive in the interaction with the, the child, with the girl. Maybe because of the... A child has still this sense of uh, not separation from uh, what is happening around him, the object. There is a, we can say, using this term, magical or a relationship with all that is around. He is learning and he has a communication through fantasy but through feelings. So, still in me, that thing is still alive and I kept it. Uh, alive like in a, when you are at, at a nest and you have the small, uh, the small baby or bird uh, that are still there and you are trying to treasure this feeling of magical things around. It can be magical or in good happening like in the market and it can be magical also in strong and sad happenings in in the last. So each, each has his own, we say, soul or entity moves around the things. And that is my, my world. Hi, I'm Anushka and um, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the process of writing this beautiful book to market to market. So, see the normal process for a picture book, if, if the illustrator and writer are the same person, then it's a seamless process, right? The illustrator imagines the page and also uh, figures out the words to go with it. And it's, there's, there's a kind of seamlessness about the process. But when there's a writer and an illustrator involved, the, the usual thing is for the writer to write the story and then the illustrator takes the story and imagines it visually and creates the visual for it. But I seem to have done a lot of books where I look at the visual first, I have the visual with me and then I have to write, write the story or the verse to it. The very first book I wrote was done like that, Tiger on a Tree, where the story was complete, right? The, the, the illustrations were just entirely complete. You could just look at it and you know this, you knew the story. You didn't really need the words. But at the same time, a book without words seemed to be like not such a fun thing. So the challenge then was to tell the same story in words without repeating what the illustrations were already saying. So then one needs to get a little tangential. So you got to stay. It's, it's a nice, it's a little, it's a bit of a balancing act where you have, you have the visual there, 
you already have the story so you tell the same story but you say it in such a way that there is no repetition and it adds something to the story so that the so the so that the words are not exactly not just saying what the illustrations are already showing and that's a that's a fun thing to try and do so what i did then was that i made the verse a little first of all i wrote it in verse which itself gave me, gave me a bit to play with bit of playfulness there and i also wrote made it a little absurd the verse sounded absurd so the story was there and it was a it was something that really happened but the verse took it off into a level of absurdity which wasn't there in in the visuals so after that i seem to have written a lot of books like that i can really enjoy that and um, so this this book especially when it came i saw the illustrations and i was totally blown away because the illustrations are just so gorgeous look at the color in those look at the energy you know it's just so much happening it's on the face of it it's it was when it was given to me it was about a walk through a market so the market itself is a beautiful magical colorful place but with what emmanuel had done was he had added this element of playfulness so there's the girl with this cap of flowers there were fish leaping about it kind of had a uh, another fantasy a level of fantasy subtly done and it was just so beautiful it completely blew me away and i wanted to write the text to it so when i look at a visual um i respond to it uh, sometimes sometimes i respond to it very immediately so sometimes it's the it's the playfulness of it or sometimes it's some 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 little element that that will strike me and create connections in my head But with this book what happened was that the moment i saw it it create this i got this playful rhythm in my head which i couldn't get rid of so so i started with that so it was every page you know it was just there was there was this feeling of this girl jumping around the market leaping about and having fun and that rhythm is what i started with so you have the pages going jangle 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 i'm a bangle holding stand nosy 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 i'm a cozy i feel grand so there's this there's this rhythm that was there and that's what i started with because that's what happened when i saw the illustrations i it immediately created this rhythm in my head after i wrote the rhythm to the actual illust- to the pictures that i already had we decided this i remember we discussed it and we said it needed a larger frame which had you know which is which was uh, not just about this girl jumping to the market but a, a bit something that would give a story to the whole thing anchor it in a story so then i came up with the story of this girl getting money from her mother to buy something in the market and then she goes jumping through the market you know having fun and then at the end she when she comes back and her mother asks her what did you buy she realizes oops i bought nothing because i was having so much fun so you know it has a it has a kind of it talks to the whole idea of consumerism and all that but that was not in my mind it was just a story and um, but essentially essentially this book was a response to manuel's amazing illustrations so that's how it happened for me and i'm so glad it did because i, I haven't enjoyed a book so much uh, in, you know in the in the in just the way that it created sounds in my head that is very unique about this book for me hello everybody my name is ratna and i am the designer for uh, to market to market and i'm really excited to talk to you about the process uh, that we followed in in creating and designing and publishing uh, this book so um when i came to the book it was uh, oh, after i'd seen uh, emmanuel's and uh, illustrations and anushka's um text to it um and normally you get it as every designer does i saw the illustrations i was lucky enough to see the illustrations in person um which you know is a bit difficult now with kind of covid going on um and anushka's text accompanying that um neatly marked in relation to the illustration 
Now, Anishka has already spoken about the kind of vibrant nature of, uh, you know, the illustrations of Emmanuel's illustrations and the real sense of detail and her response in terms of writing the text. So to add a third element of design to it or color or type, I had to be very, very careful not to to be respectful to the illustrator and uh, the, the author, but also to think about the reader. And I think that's the primary role, isn't it, of a designer? Uh, is to think about the reader. Who is this for? How will they read it? Um, how can I kind of work with the text that's there in my choice of typography so it kind of accentuates what needs to be said rather than kind of take it away? So uh, my first thing was to keep it quite simple. I have to mark it to mark it here. So that's what I'm looking at while I'm talking to you. And I first wanted to kind of choose a typeface that was actually really quite simple because I think that uh, to have a complicated or too many type choices uh, when you have really rich and layered illustrations would be that the text would be competing with the illustrations. Um, so that was one of the first choices. I think the other thing was the illustrations were so beautiful and you can see some of them over here. It's like, look at the range of it. And even on, on a video, you could see, you know, the detail of it, of the little girl holding, you know, her mom's hand, uh, of lots happening, lots of little, little narratives happening. And um, I wanted to sort of work with that in the sense that if we made the book uh, too small, some of that detail would have been lost. So how could we kind of really celebrate that detail? In a marketplace, it's like a huge, it, it's a big space. So can we bring some of that? Can we make the book the marketplace? Can we make it a space? Um, a, a, can we make the object a place? So the size of this, as you can see, is quite big. Um, I'm holding it in my hand. You could see it in relation to my head. It's quite, it's about, you know, double the size of my head. Um, and that's also, you know, it's really important. And I think that, you know, as an adult, I'm holding this and it feels this way. But if a child holds it, imagine that it's a huge book and you get that sense of that illustration in relation to the child's scale in, in their body in relation to the book as an object. And that's a really important part of reading is to think about how someone would hold the book, um, how they would go through the book and also how they form a relationship with the book that also about the book as an object. So the first thing that we did was to create a little bit of drama about the book as it's coming. So it says to market to market, you know, there's a lot going on and what happens. So I think it was really interesting for me to sort of play with the fly leaf. So you open it up and oh my God, there's like a heck of a lot going on. What's going on? It's very dramatic. It's quite fun, but there's a lot of action, which is really also important in, in a book to kind of keep uh, the reader intrigued, but also to kind of move, turn the page to find out what's next. Um, the type, in terms of type choices, I kept it really simple and classical. So it's in relation to that. It's it's The type is quite big so that it can be read by an early reader. Um, it could be read by a parent or a child. It's a book that you could read at different stages of it. And um, and as I said, I kept the, the type quite simple, but also easily readable um, in relation to the, to the illustration. Um, so both of those could interact with each other. Uh, it was also really interesting to play, have an opportunity to play on some pages with type play and actually kind of use the type as an image on an illustrative way. And this is one which is about uh, bangles. So we've got a jangle, jangle, jangle um, in the shape of a bangle. So echoing shapes that we might feel or see in our minds um, and, and kind of echo them in the shape of the type and how we put the type, not only how we put the type on a, on a page, but also how we kind of um, uh, place it on the page and where we place it. So here's something that the type is quite small. It says creeping, creeping, creeping. And it's a very kind of it's a gentle whisper across the thing. So when someone's reading it aloud to a child, they might not they might say over here in a big one, um, jangle, 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 because it's quite big. And then you have a smaller type and you say creeping, creeping, creeping. I am peeping. I'm a spy. So it encourages the typography adds voice to the book and perhaps encourages someone to kind of, as they're reading the book, to use expression. I used very, very simple uh, shapes. So the thumping, 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 
takes the, sh the shape of a fish jumping out of the water, for example. Um, so using silly, simple shapes and sometimes fun shapes to sort of echo that um, and to sort of illustrate in its own way uh, what the text is, what the text is saying. I have to say that um, there's a real freedom in, in when you do this, but also a great responsibility. And I guess the freedom is that as a person, as a designer, I'm reacting to the text and to the image. I'm getting into the words. I could feel them. I could hear them. I'm reacting to the images quite viscerally. Um, and that's really fun and enjoyable. But there's also a responsibility that I have to the reader, which is that at the end of the day, somebody's reading this and you want to make it an enjoyable experience for them. But also you want to cater to a real diverse range of audiences. You want to think about children reading by themselves, adults, you know, um, two adults reading it, children and, and, and parents reading it. And that openness of thinking about who reading it helps the sense of responsibility that you feel as a designer. The last thing I'd say is about the book as an object. It's a really big book and it's really, really important that when you're designing something, you design it not just as a page on a screen, but you design it as an object that's to be held, uh, to be cherished, um, but also a, a, a utilitarian object that is easy to use. And this book is super, super light. So even a four-year-old or five-year-old can hold it. They could sit with it. Uh, but an adult can hold it and and I think that's that's the joy of actually design which is not just on a page or a screen but when it goes out into the world and it leaves your hands um, how is somebody else going to receive it and how will they start that conversation with them that they themselves having with the book it's been a real pleasure to talk to you about something that's really close to my heart which is about typography and design um, and publishing and the book um, and I hope you'll enjoy it and I hope that it'll convince you when it's safe um, to go back to market to market. Bye for now. Hi, I'm Indo Chan. 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 어 한국에 있을 때 서울과 전주 여행을 했어요. 어 당연히 쇼핑 같은 거 해야 되니까 어 서울에 있는 대형 마트도 가봤고 어 전주에 있는 어 전통 시장에도 가봤어요. 가보니까 서울에 있는 대형 마트와 어 전주에 있는 어 전통 마트의 매력이 정말 다르고 느낌도 달랐어요. 어 전통 시장에는요. 어, 그, 사람들이 너무 정겹고, 어, 마음이 너무 따뜻했어요. 어, 그리고, 근데, 어, 서울에 있는 대형 마트에는요, 어, 손님들과 거의 대화를 안 하더라고요. 그리고, 저 사실, 한국 시장에, 어, 목걸이 가게에, 다양한 목걸이 가게에, 받았어요. 지금 정말 너무 맛있어요. 많이 써, 너무 맛있었어. 많이 먹게 되고, 어, 제 생각에는요, 어, 그 먹는 시간, 시간, 그 먹는 순간에만, 어, 제일 행복했었던 시간인 것 같아요. 그리고 저 한국어에 관심이 많으니까, 어, 어, 시장에 자주 쓰는 단어들을 잘 외웠어요. 어, 그, 외웠던 단어들은요, 어, 첫 번째는, 어서 오세요. 그리고, 어, 뭐 드릴까요? 어, 깎아주세요. 그리고, 필요한 거 있으시면 말씀해주세요. 야채, 과일, 어, 신선하죠? 그리고, 어, 얼마나예요? 음, 어, 많이 주세요. 이런 단어들을, 어, 잘 외우게 됐어요. 그리고 제 경험으로 보면 어, 한국 시장과 인도 시장의 차이점과 유사 유사점에 대해 잠깐 얘기해 줄게요. 어, 유사한 점은요. 서울에 있는 대형 마트처럼 인도에서도 대형 마트가 아주 많아요. 약간 지하 1층 1층부터 시작하고 어, 아마 5에서 7층까지 높이에 어, 층마다 같은 종 같은 종류의 물건이 어, 모아놓고 고르기도 힘든 정도로 음, 물건이 아주 많아요. 많고 어, 많고 어, 인도처럼 한국에 있는 어, 전통 시장에 어, 
사람들이 너무 따뜻하고 정이 많이 느껴져요. 네. 그리고 자이점은요. 어, 한국 전, 전통 시장이나 대형 시장은 어, 원래 대부분 어, 정찰치고 흥정하기가 어, 쉽지가 않더라고요. 근데 인도에서는요. 어, 그 어, 대형 마트만 빼면 어, 어딜 가든 흥정 자연스럽게 할수 있어요. 어, 할수 있고 어, 제 생각으로 인도는 어마어마하게 거니까 어, 문화와 전통 문화와 전통이 아주 많으니까 우리 다 인도인이지, 인도인이지만 우리가 다랑하는 문화와 전통에 따라 그 제품도 어, 달, 어, 다르게 만, 어, 다르게 바라요. 근데 한국에서 한국에서는요. 어, 그리고 그 문화와 전통에 따라 제품이 어, 달라지지 않았어요. 다, 똑, 다 약간 똑같, 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 똑같이 생겼어요. 네. 아무래도 저 한국 시장, 한국 시장의 매력에 아주 빠졌으니까 어, 다시 한국에 가게 되면 어, 한국 시장에 대해 많이 알고 싶고 어, 많이 구경하고 싶어요. 어, 그래서 시장에 가요, 시장에 가요. 네, 감사합니다. 좋은 하루 보내세요. Hello everyone, um, so I hope you enjoyed the session and thank you for watching through this. Um, so I just, before I go on to the other things, I wanted to say that this title which is To Market To Market along with the two other titles in the series, uh, traveling titles, before this was Knock Knock and before that was The Color Book. All of them are on discount on our website. Um, it's a 20% discount. You just have to apply the code traveling titles. The details of this is always in the, is also in the description. So, um, yeah, um, I wanted to mention one thing, which is that um, Ratna spoke very nicely about um, the hardcover edition of the book. But uh, what we have available now is soft cover, and it's a bit smaller, but just as delightful. Um, and we also see that uh, Tanushri Singh has uh, written in. We're big fans of the Reading Raccoons uh, here at Tara, so thank you so much for joining us. And um, I'd also like to thank Anushka Ravishankar, Emmanuel Eskanziani, Ratna Ramanathan, Saranya from the INCO Center and of course the INCO Center itself for joining us um, in this session. Um, next, uh, next month we have Gobble You Up, so do join us for that. Um, thank you again and see you.